So I think we can start also streams recording. And I'll start it the other one. Welcome to everyone. I think I will be shifting languages as convenient. Uh, I am Rab Labadze from Georgia. I am the regional expert of the European Training Foundation. And also I am the professor at the higher educational establishment. So I am teaching about the e-governance and innovations. The ETF recently launched a new initiative, Creative New Learning. And this is the community, and this webinar is also conducted in the framework of this community activity, and Fabio will tell us more in a second. Our today's topic is about STEM and STEAM, and why STEAM is interesting for everyone, and why do we need to transform STEM into STEAM or not. So we are going to discuss all of the related relevant questions. Each of us is going to present their perspectives, either from the theoretical point of view or the practical point of view. I believe uh, this topic is going to keep this relevance for quite a long time. So it's important that we learn about the best practices and about the new innovative uh, things. And maybe it's also important for you to present your activities. We are going to work for the coming 90 minutes, maybe a bit longer. For those who joined recently, I would like to repeat that we are making the recording and the recording will be available on the website of the community. If you are not a member of the community yet, uh, you are warmly invited. Uh, we will leave the details for registration on the chat and Fabio will tell you more as well. Thank you for finding time to join this event. I hope you are going to participate actively and you will find this webinar interesting. And I, I will pass the floor to Fabio, who will tell us more about the uh, community of innovative um, teachers that was recently launched. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Merab. Big pleasure to be here. I hope everybody can hear me and uh, see the slide in the background, so I will take no more than two minutes. I don't want to steal the time to this very interesting event. I'm Fabio Nascimbeni from the European Training Foundation. And uh, I just would like to, first of all, to state the importance of this event and of the other events that we are organizing in the frame of the community of innovative educators to advance uh, the discussion basically in the ETF partner countries and uh, at, at the international level and just show you uh, in a couple of slides uh, what is the community that we are trying to build. So basically we are working, uh, we have been working in the last couple of months. We, we started the community in September and we already reached uh, more than 500 users and I hope uh, you are already registered or you will register soon. Basically, this is a multilingual community targeted to all the people who have an interest in innovative education in any issue you can think of. Here you can see some of the issues we discussed uh, in the previous webinars uh, that we are uh, debating in the community posts. Uh, and uh, the other thing of the community, actually, we, we if you look at the, at the words uh, below, actually, we, we try to look for practices and for ideas that can serve as inspiration in order to be localized to your needs. Of course, we know that uh, different uh, solutions must be adapted to the different uh, context and to foster finally adoption and systematization. So this is a bit uh, the idea of the community and um, I'm very happy to see that uh, for, for a webinar like this, for example, on such an important issue like STEM or STEAM, if we want to add the A, as we will see, uh, I think it's uh, it's important to discuss this thing and hopefully to keep on the discussion on the on the website of the community that you can see down there. I will also put it in the in the chat, and uh, basically that's it. So from uh, from the European Training Foundation, you have the the guarantee that we will do our best to make sure that uh, every innovation or every idea that uh, is shared or that comes out and is discussed in this event or in other events will be will be brought forward and uh, towards implementation and uh, and uh, promotion and dissemination so i wish a great webinar to everybody and i will be i look forward to the ideas that we are going to share
Thank you, Fabio. Fabio is human development expert at the European Training Foundation. And uh, well, together with other colleagues is uh, developing this important and interesting initiative. But I wanted to emphasize that it depends on all of us how the community is shaped and our inputs. So it's pretty much the process and the work in the making. And uh, probably in near we'll reflect our today's experiences. And I hope uh, we shall be far away from this current initial point and our results will be also interesting for all of us and we'll find, um, find the enjoyment in the community. Uh, so let me present briefly some observations of the European uh, project and also some uh, which will just a recent project they summarize the research available uh, for today in the field and also the project uh, focuses not only on the research on the practices and other things. Uh, so I'll share the screen now and you'll see. So you can see, right? Uh, so the project is called STEAM on EDU, which is was funded by the European Commission Erasmus Plus uh, project. Uh, so what's it all about STEAM? We all know that STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Math. And it um, started in the US first, and also it was based on another relatively new concept of STEM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, Math. Uh, the purpose of uh, STEAM was more to include more holistic approach and maybe STEM was perceived a little bit uh, lacking creative and uh, aesthetic angles. So the point was somehow to involve also uh, creative uh, disciplines and subjects or uh, to um, make it more holistic. Actually, STEAM definitions are still uh, not very mature, unlike uh, STEM. Uh, STEAM is relatively new in the research and the, in the policies as well. But also well, some uh, agencies and some educator uh, um, organizations, policymaking organizations, did already um, define uh, what STEAM is. So what's uh, STEAM according to New York State Educator Agency? It's an intentional collaborative pedagogy for teachers that empowers uh, learners to engage in real world experiences through the authentic alignment of standards, processes, and practices in science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. So I bolded, bolded several points here. From my point, there are the main ones, which is collaborative pedagogy uh, for teachers, as the main agents and providers that empowers learners and engages them. And again, the new, the other uh, key point here the real world experiences. Um, through authentic alignment, um, because authentic is important word here, um, uh, in the alignments of existing standards, processes, and practices in these subjects. Um, STEAM and STEM actually don't constitute new subjects, which results in a holistic approach and also its integrative approach. Uh, it was not subject-based learning, but rather integrative. And uh, so trying to integrate subject teaching from uh, uh, integrating uh, subject teaching, teaching from each uh, point of view. Um, so um, basically STEM is more developed in the policies and practices um, rather than STEAM. So even in this project that I based my uh, today's presentation, um, A is, is in the brackets. So um, the clue and the key is understanding A. So the main difference of different perceptions of um, STEAM uh, education comes from um, what we perceive in A. So what, what are the main groupings, what researchers found in um, different reports and analytics and also um, practice areas. First, it's arts education. Another one, it's uh, A stands for arts. Arts means that any other non-STEM discipline, so involvement uh, integrating on any other discipline to 
um, uh, to STEM, or arts could be uh, project-based learning, problem-based learning, technology-based learning, or making. So I have prepared a poll, just to uh, let me launch it for a second, and then you can vote for your preference. I'll share it in the chat. And you can go to slide and we can see live results. Let me just put it into the chat just a minute. Here it is. Okay. Can you return to the presentation? So what are usual goals of STEM education? First is to prepare active and functioning citizens um, in the knowledge society and in scientific technology, the advanced society, which we're uh, currently going through on digital transformation is also taking um, um, the pace and all coming to our uh, homes and our workplace in the workplaces and everywhere. Also, another goal is promote educational activities uh, focusing on designing experiential learning and problem solving. Uh, another point is to support the development of transversal soft skills, such as critical thinking and communication. So probably separately, all of them are familiar and together these are integrated to the concept of um, um, STEAM education. Also to strengthen, strengthen students' personal and social abilities to address labor market needs. Actually, <clears throat> STEM education has started uh, with active involvement of international organizations and uh, the demand for uh, STEM specializations and technical specializations and the lack of those uh, professionals in many uh, advanced countries has led to specific policies and addressing these needs on the national level and on the some uh, other uh, level and launching the international initiatives uh, to make these uh, new specializations more popular. And also this is associated to lately with the involvement of women and girls and the more minorities into this field and to make it popular among different uh, groups as well. So to make um, these subjects interesting and to address the, um, so the need for more specialists in the absence of current lack of such specialists, especially whether it's IT or science and technology. Uh, what I don't, uh, uh, don't analyze here, a huge project. I'll provide the link uh, in the end of my presentation. But um, what 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 are the teachers' role? We are educators here, so they've defined the five uh, teacher roles in team context. First, the teacher, a trainer, a tutor. Um, I think uh, it, in the context of pedagogy, content, knowledge, instruction, use of content and tools, feedback and assessment, uh, learning empowerment. These are more all familiar for you. Another role is relatively new is a learning designer in the sense of which, um, integrating all those subjects, designing and producing outputs, which is course, activity design, content and tools, uh, development and learning development. Another role is orchestrator and manager, which means coordinating procedures and procedures and outputs. Uh, competencies here are educational procedure management and resource management. Also, the new role for the teacher is a community member, uh, which means interacting with the environment and competencies of community building application of policies in the community, uh, the players um, and the environment, and also parents um, play important, families play important roles sometimes in the STEAM projects, which expand uh, the borders of the traditional schooling and traditional educational institution. Then there is a professional, <clears throat> Uh, developing and applying competences, uh, which means uh, sufficient uh, existing of opportunities of sufficient professional development in the subject. In the first uh, subject, where the teacher is the so the main subject, and also but integrating others, and the here also uh, two um, two competencies are distributed across the areas, which are transferable skills and digital skills plus professional development. Um, so they, 
um, project group has defined the main principles of um, STEAM education. First of all, yeah, it's the integrated content. So the question is whether the content is integrated, covers uh, not one subject, but uh, many subjects. Uh, and it's um, uh, teaching the uh, STEM, STEAM as a whole, and uh, not from the subject point of view. Another one, and very important, is real world uh, integration, uh, which means connection of learners' experiences and STEAM education to their um, integrated knowledge, the connection their knowledge to their real world experiences. Um, STEAM and beyond, which means integrates fine arts, social studies, and language arts. So here are three uh, complementary areas where usually STEAM education is believed to link to, which is fine arts, social studies, and also language arts. Inclusive STEAM education, uh, next generation 20th and first century skills, um, you probably know all of them, which means prom promotes problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication, time management, and adaptability. Then there is project-based, problem-based learning, which means hands-on projects are motivated by a genuine learner inquiry and problem-based perspectives. Authentic assessment here, not, not um, integrated in traditional, not traditional, no, not uh, very commonly used uh, methods of uh, assessment, which are effort qualities or similar. Then technology enabled the learning with emphasis on applied technology. Um, then teacher is a facilitator. Students as uh, students as a through this teacher as a facilitator, students should become self-responsible learners. Collaboration, group and pair work is encouraged. Open-ended learning, which means that the uh, groups and learners go as far as the setting or um, the project allows, and the final result is often not predefined. And support it. So the ongoing professional development is available in uh, the field. Uh, what were the outcomes of the STEAM Edu project? You can see here the website. I will copy it into the chat. You can find uh, really a lot of materials there in different areas, which is STEAM education framework, uh, competence framework, similar to other European competence frameworks, at least the uh, uh, proposal of such framework, then uh, STEAM educator profile, MOOCs, massive online open courses targeting STEAM educators and the pilot course, it was intended to involve 500 participants, um, and we shall further um, see if uh, any one of you can um, be engaged into this course. And there is a guide of STEM educator practices, a guide on STEM education policies, and a guide for STEM education policy makers. If we go there, we can see different areas, like result platform. Uh, for the platform, there is also a searchable database of good practices. Uh, and also you can see the results, practices, policies, repositories. And you can further explore uh, this website. And as I said, uh, there is um, research evidence on also Mm, concrete mm, examples of uh, the projects. We don't have time here to explore this more. Let me uh, go to just a second to Slido and see the results there. Just a second. So if you have questions, please type them into the chat. And I'll press them. Uh, okay, so arts education, uh, sixty percent project problem learning uh, based learning, twenty percent. Your answers, technology based learning, twenty, and none uh, any other non STEM discipline or maker. So the votes are as follows as for now, and we'll have another one a little bit later. So thank you for your attention. And uh, now I give floor to Oksana Pasichnik from Ukraine, 
who will talk about creativity in computer science? Please, Oksana. Yes, hello. Uh, nice to see you, everyone. Uh, I am a bit, I'm hoping you can hear me because the setting is really unusual. Actually, you are in my classroom. Uh, I planned to get back home, but I couldn't manage. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing in my classroom and specifically what I'm doing about com computer science and creativity. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully that will work. And um, actually, um, my topic is creative computer science, because quite a lot of people believe that uh, computer science is really the world of ones and zeros, and it really cannot be um, any uh, kind of creativity in there. Uh, it is not just the world of ones and zeros, in, in my belief. It's also uh, a strong belief that quite a lot of people think that uh, our strict curriculum doesn't allow any space for creativity. And we say that we have to follow our uh, curriculums, our syllabus, and we don't have any time for anything extra, like creativity is considered sometimes extra. And I claim it doesn't. Our curriculum doesn't limit uh, creativity. It, it is possible to do it creatively uh, anyways. Uh, also, some people believe that uh, creativity is possible only if you have something extra. If you have some extra equipment, especially in computer science, you need some robotics, you need some extra uh, nice computers, which we actually got today. That's why I'm here uh, after my lessons. Um, I'm going to show you that uh, it is possible not only for advanced classes, but for regular classes, for the students who are just interested in uh, getting to know a little bit more and that it can happen on the lessons and uh, not even only on lessons on computer science. Uh, my name is Oksana and I'm a computer science teacher from Lviv, Ukraine. I have seen in the chat that we have somebody from Ukraine as well. Uh, I am also working with the um, European Verkland Center as an online learning consultant. And I have been doing online learning before it was uh, a trend two years ago. I am also digital citizenship education promoter because I believe that uh, computing as a subject shouldn't limit itself to just coding or just computer science. We can do actually quite more uh, with the opportunities our modern world uh, has got. And also I am the member of the national curriculum development team here in Ukraine. Uh, we are updating curriculum that is called um, New Ukrainian School. We have uh, um, done that with primary school. Now we have moved to the basic education and hopefully uh, we are going to the high school as well in some time in the future. Uh, I would like to start with a quote uh, of uh, Pablo Picasso, who said that computers are useless. They can only give you answers, which is quite interesting because sometimes the answer is what we need. And it says that the answers from computers are so definite that they actually can be predicted. And if we can predict something, is it really creative if we are just finding answers to the problems that we already have. And I think uh, Picasso is genius, but I think uh, he was wrong on, on this one. I don't think that computers are useless and they can give you not only answers, but the space to create those uh, questions, uh, to search for answers. As I said, computer science quite often is viewed as something really strict. Uh, for instance, you can see a, a lot of lines of code and this is something associated with computer science lessons. You have a lot of code on your screen and that's all you're doing. You're fixing some errors that inevitably come around. And that's uh, the, something that is really intimidating to quite a lot of people, especially to a lot of girls. Uh, I think that uh, this is a common problem for a, a lot of countries when we have mostly boys interested in this kind of things. And I think that even though it may look uh, quite uh, tedious, quite boring, but actually it opens the whole new world of uh, possibilities and um, new things that can happen here. Uh, I believe that computer science is not just about coding, but about thinking, about computational thinking, about uh, being able to create. And the word create is actually from creativity. Uh, uh, that you can create some solution 
the problem, the solution that didn't exist before. And this solution should be logical, of course, because it's computer science. Uh, it's, it's according to some algorithms. It, it uses some patterns uh, in order to uh, make use of uh, loops and other things. It uses a lot of decomposition uh, when uh, we break down our huge problem into smaller parts and then solve these smaller parts and combine a new solution from them. It's a lot of tinkering because it's really um, often when we are faced with a lot of things that go wrong in our programming, either it's a logical mistake or syntax mistake, and a lot of perseverance needed to actually go through. And all of this is actually all about creativity, being able to create something new, to play with it, and continue doing it, even if you are not getting the right solution right away. Uh, here you can see some of the pictures from my classes, and I believe that creativity is at the heart of computer science. Uh, I have tried to uh, show uh, various activities. Uh, here is the quote from um, Satya Nadella uh, that computer science empowers students to create the world of tomorrow. And that's actually something that is the basis of computer science. That's what we are doing on these lessons. Either we are doing it with uh, uh, paper-based uh, uh, creativity of uh, user interfaces. Uh, here are younger students who are drawing some interfaces and later we are trying to program them. Uh, it can be students who are creating code uh, in the hour of code activities. By the way, I uh, strongly encourage you to take part in this uh, a wonderful event. Usually it is happening at the beginning of December each year uh, so that students of all the subjects of all the ages uh, would be engaged in some uh, coding and uh, creativity with that coding. It can happen with some simple boards like uh, here you can see makey makey boards uh, that uh, actually make uh, programming quite tangible and uh, visible for, for the naked eye, I would say. Uh, also, you can see the example of the work of my students who were try trying to create some um, houses and trees. And even though the assignment was about loops in some programming language and we have been trying to use functions and everything, it was like a, a lot of programming things going on, but the result is really creative. We can see that each picture is different uh, because uh, Every student tried to make it different and tried to show the, the city of their dreams in, in this case. Uh, I would also like to claim that even though the algorithm is really um, something very strict, it's a set of instructions for solving a problem, uh, I would say that uh, actually uh, it can be really diverse what we are getting from the algorithm. For example, on this slide, you can see um, an algorithm, and I encourage you to do it by hand. Uh, if you happen to have a piece of paper, please take it and uh, take a, a pencil or, or a pen and just draw a line on that piece of paper. After that, draw another line uh, on a 90 degree angle to the previous one. So it, it has to be uh, at the 90 degree angle to the previous line. And you repeat this last, last step 10 times. And I will try to see as many screens as possible here. And okay, it's working. Not exactly. Uh, could you please show to the camera what you have got as the result of this algorithm? Oh, nice result. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, we can see that the results are different. We follow the same algorithm. And of course, this is a very good exercise to show students that you have to be really precise when writing an algorithm. But anyway, you can get different results from the same set of instructions. 
And quite often in school, we are getting very different results with our students, even if we give them, them the same set of instructions. So actually, algorithm it has the potential uh, to be quite creative and quite open-ended. That's what's happening with our uh, algorithms when we try to teach them. Uh, for example, if we try to teach uh, some really strict programming concepts, and we are trying to teach them in, I would say, so-called boring way, we can, of course, follow uh, these um, diagrams. But we can also do something different. For instance, here you can see the cubes, which I really love. I, I think the cube is uh, one of the best teaching tools that you, you can have. Uh, these cubes uh, have some names written on them and some numbers. And one side of the cube is uh, blank. Actually, I will try to run it from here. Yeah, should be working. Uh, as a lot of things nowadays, uh, I had to transfer this exercise into an online format. And this is a, a virtual cube, a 3D cube uh, that you can play with. And I will uh, give access to this presentation. You will do it uh, in your free time. And you can explore this cube and find that one side is blank. And the task is to offer something to be put on there. You have to find the pattern, and patterns are uh, something very basic to computer science. You have to understand why these numbers are happening here and what should be written on the blank side. And this is also an open-ended exercise. Actually, one of oh, oh, more than one uh, correct answer can be given here. Therefore, it's also uh, a space for creativity space for open-ended uh, resolution from the seemingly uh, strict problem, strict um, uh, solution. I'm sorry, this is really, oh. Another thing uh, that uh, I actually need to practice with my students a lot, and those who uh, practice programming a lot also have this, it's dealing with errors, as I mentioned. Uh, because usually uh, the huge words error uh, are jumping into the screen uh, right from the beginning when we start programming. And this is something really discouraging. And the solution offered by uh, one of the most wonderful websites uh, that exists, I believe, uh, based on Scratch, is getting unstuck from Harvard. And it is a set of uh, different cards that provide ideas what to do if you are stuck. If you are stuck doing uh, a problem, if you are stuck finding a solution. And it allows you to not just use this solution in computer science with Scratch, but with many other things in your life. For example, if you're stuck, go talk to other people. Uh, just explain them your project. And maybe by just explaining your project, you will be able to find an answer. If you're trying to um, uh, make something work, make sure that you actually understand what you're trying to do. You have to verbalize it or draw a diagram or do something else in order to transfer it from one form to another. This is also something very basic to computer science, but I believe it's also very basic to any kind of problem solving. So it really goes be well beyond uh, computing. If you want to have your uh, solution for yourself, go help others. Maybe watching their projects uh, will make you understand what the problem with your project is and you will be able to find a solution. Uh, we are using these cards either online, I will not go to that uh, link uh, because uh, it's uh, too, uh, too long, it takes too long to go back. Uh, but also we have this card somewhere here um, uh, printed and laminated. So students, if they are stuck, they just come to my desk and grab this card and uh, do something that is written on these cards. They are really playful. Therefore, they are not forcing into something really boring or, or long or um, taking too much effort. Therefore, actually students really like it. When I am talking about computer science, I usually uh, see it everywhere. And uh, I can see it in mathematics, I can see it in physics, I can see it in arts, I can see it in languages. 
uh, but also um, I'm trying to uh, give dimension to many things uh, from the point of view of computer science. For example, New Year 3, which is going to be a seasonal activity uh, this year as well. It can be a, a graphical a chart that students are following some directions. They can program a, a, a New Year tree being drawn on the screen. But actually, one of the, my most favorite activities is paper-based. Uh, this New Year tree is composed uh, of uh, different parts uh, printed on different parts of paper, and students are coloring it uh, in groups. Uh, they find this activity to be just fun, but after we talk about it a little bit, we understand that it's more than just fun. It's more than just drawing or, or, or just coloring. Uh, we actually practice a lot of computer science concepts while working with it. For example, we need to make sure that the large problem is divided into different parts, it's decomposition, and then to make sure that they work together, we need to collaborate, we need to cooperate, we need to communicate, and it, it can actually be quite a bit of, of a problem, because maybe you can uh, see it, but the bottom uh, left part of this new year tree is purple. It wasn't supposed to be purple, it was supposed to be green, but students miscommunicated, and therefore we have part of the tree that is purple. Uh, also, uh, something really interesting uh, uh, happening here in the left bottom part is the uh, part with the uh, presence box. It was also not planned. Students uh, took just the purple um, pencil and started drawing and then realized that they started coloring the wrong part of the paper. Therefore, they, they, they tried to turn the bug into the feature something quite often happening in computer science environment. If you are doing something, if you are finding that your software is running wrong, maybe you can make, make a present box out of it. Uh, also, we have been uh, understanding that in order to see the broad picture, sometimes we need to step back. And this is also something really important to practice, not just in computer science, but in many other sides of your uh, life as well. And I will go to the next slide with uh, one of my favorite uh, methodologists of this approach I'm taking with my students, or at least I'm trying to take with my students. Uh, the approach that uh, shows that learning is itself a creative activity. Learning is happening with your peers. Learning is happening uh, when you are doing some projects that uh, inspire you, they give you passion. And it shouldn't be uh, boring. It should be all done in a playful manner. It shouldn't be all just a game, of course, but it, it has to be done uh, in a way that inspires students to do more. The same way that uh, we can see students doing uh, on the playgrounds. We usually can't get them back home because they like doing what they are doing. And when we give space, during computer science lessons on different activities, either coding or something related to coding, like the new year tree, we can provide this space where students can be really creative. And if you haven't read the books uh, by Mitch Resnick, please, uh, they, there are, uh, they are quite available on the internet and a wonderful uh, online course uh, by him, uh, also about learning creative learning. And I would like to conclude with another quote. Uh, of one of the also quite genius people, uh, David Helbert, who uh, said that um, upon hearing that one of his students uh, dropped out of his uh, studies of mathematics and he decided to study poetry. So uh, Hilbert said that it's really good because that student didn't have enough imagination to become a mathematician. Uh, great mathematician believed that um, Imagination is way more important for mathematics than it is for poetry. And uh, of course, uh, it is uh, quite common for a teacher to believe that their subject is the most important one, the most creative one, the most beautiful one. Uh, but I truly believe that computer science gives us not just the floor, but the instruments to explore our creativity with our students. 
On this, I will conclude this presentation and thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Aksana. I think you will teach creative computer science for all of us. For all of us. Unfortunately, we're in on the online only mod modality, but we already started to talk about professional development. So maybe it's, uh, it will become part of the, this community as well. Um, so we'll consider your interesting class with the interaction and also with the um, line drawing. Um, which uh, I already somehow uh, started to draw not the uh, straight lines because it was about creativity. So it was kind of keep not to do it in the usual way, in, in yeah. a sense. Uh, also, uh, what I've recalled, it's uh, uh, trees, it's in Russian, it's called trees. It was popular in the last century, but I think it's uh, also popular now in many companies, also including not only engineering companies, but also the arts agencies, creative agencies, which is theory is the задачи. of the задач. It's a, um, it has some Soviet background, but it's adopted by many companies right now. And there is um, one expert in Georgia. I think uh, there is a movement in Belarus and Ukraine. So probably we'll also play with this uh, topic a little bit, how it could be integrated in also in STEAM, and especially in STEAM, the R in the A in the middle. Uh, thank you very much um, for your presentation. Now I would like to ask the Russian speaking audience not to feel intimidated. We do have the interpretation, so you can speak uh, in Russian or in English. You can well speak in Russian, we will have it uh, interpreted. Uh, it's unfortunately not the eight languages for interpretation, but only two languages. Uh, so let's make use of it. Uh, Thank you very much. And uh, I can see that the colleague from Georgia would like to ask a question. We are going to speak in two languages and have our presentation. I will be speaking in Russian and my colleague Medea will be speaking in English. Presentation. Uh, Welcome to everyone again, and we shall present and we represent the Center for Professional Development. Let me share the screen. We represent the Center for Professional Development uh, in Georgia. It's uh, called otherwise the teacher house. And we represent uh, the program offering support uh, for uh, sciences. But basically, this is the STEM program. Another name is Chircadella for uh, that name. You can see our web page now where we post our various models and uh, projects that we do and activities that we have. These are the participants of our program. You can see Mr. Mishalafili and uh, me. Uh, and Maya and these are our different projects that we have and offer to our teachers and learners. So I would like to start with that. When in 2019 uh, we launched this program, one of the new ideas was uh, not only to work with the teachers because our center obviously offered various training sessions, working meetings with the teachers. But we also suggested a different format. We suggested that teachers come visit with their pupils, with the learners, whatever the age uh, or the grade. Uh, we were inviting small groups of people of, of uh, pupils of different ages. Our objective was uh, that sometimes during the trainings, when uh, we presented different methods for our teachers, many teachers said that, well, 
uh, what you get in the trainings never ends up in the classes. So this is the problem of sharing the teaching practices uh, or enlivening the teaching practices in the class uh, uh, was there. So we tried to address that problem in the following way. When we had the group consisting of teachers and their pupils and learners, and we observed how they work together, and when we saw that it was interesting with the new innovative ideas, with various interesting activities, then it could be also done in the class. And it's a problem to implement it because in the formal education, in that framework, when we follow the curriculum or we have the subject-based uh, teaching, it doesn't work that way, especially in many teachers, with many teachers replicated. Therefore, uh, you can see that I have this uh, Georgian name. I will tell you more later why this name, this Georgian uh, word, but we decided to start with the development of the idea of STEM clubs in schools uh, to be able to expand that informal education into the formal learning environment to different subjects. I mean, the sciences mostly. Now I will get back to our presentation. And um, Here, uh, actually, the first question I would like to ask now to continue thinking about that. What is STEAM education about? What is the difference? Why did we need uh, to have this A added, uh, which implies uh, if we uh, take a look at the decoding, it's art. Is this mathematical adding of another subject to these 10 principles or is it more than adding, more than addition uh, operation? So it's a more comprehensive uh, teaching uh, of practical life skills. And this question is still debatable for us, but uh, we decided to follow that way. First of all, we support the idea that STEAM, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm shifting into English. We try to focus on the creativity. Please help me with the Russian word. <laughs> so I will use the term creativity. But we especially like the definition of STEM education as the incorporation of art, integration of art into STEM education in order to develop various skills with the learners, such as communication, such as uh, scientific uh, inquiry, critical thinking, and so on. So I would like to recall, especially for the older generation people, in Georgia, we had this character that was quite known in the former Soviet Union. It, his name was the Tinker. But in 1957, our Georgian animators, they made up this character and we had the Georgian name for that. So he was the Church Cadello, the tinker. I think this is the closest equivalent in English when you tinker something. And you can see that by definition of this term, it's, it's quite interesting. It uh, implies that somebody makes more changes to something in order to improve or repair it. Uh, so we thought that children usually do that. They always do that. If you buy a toy for them or the Lego or whatever, Tim sets and kits, uh, 
They will still break things, change things, redo, remake, and tinker with that, actually. And transform something in these kids. So, and we as parents uh, would really be concerned about that because we paid a lot of money for that. Uh, but uh, this tinker man, right, is uh, actually the constant urge to remake things. So we decided, why don't we use this approach in our STEM clubs? Why don't we incorporate this approach into the learning? Why don't we focus on that so that we actually give free hand to this creativity and tinkering of our children? And this is what we get as a result. And these things were created and made uh, not only by the our young learners but also together with teachers paradoxically enough but sometimes the learners would outperform their teachers in all of these skills so when a teacher shows you need to attach things together we need to discuss new ideas such as in programming of the microcontroller or something else and then the learners will teach their teachers. And this is the collaborative learning, basically, the collaborative uh, uh, energy uh, to do innovating things. You can see four different products outcomes. Uh, we are trying to promote these ideas and incorporate them not only in private schools that have more resources to teach their learners, but uh, if we actually go to various shops to buy the objects uh, for lab equipment and appliances for schools, few schools uh, actually can uh, use this approach. That's why we are trying to prevent this STEM education from becoming the elite uh, niche. Uh, so we are trying to suggest uh, buying various easy to use accessible objects and materials so that uh, the learners could uh, start from different levels, whether they know how to manage electricity or not. And the teachers probably are older age. Some of them feel the inferiority complex that they are not so good with computers. But this tinkering spirit uh, could be a solution and uh, it could actually be expressed and manifested in the class. And we do support the definition uh, on that slide. And this is the definition of art. Uh, let me remember the Russian word for this. Uh, the creative approach, this is the creative skill. This is the huge area, a wide range of human activities that involves the imagination, the emotional relation or the conceptual ideas. And it all represents the set of skills uh, that make up the model that helps find the solutions to the tasks uh, that uh, we can face in everyday lives uh, and also in the life of our country, our region and our world. So we are trying to promote these five principles in the work of the clubs, of these STEM clubs, and also when uh, learners, children start to work in the STEM projects uh, in the class, when they study different subjects, math or physics or biology. So these are five principles. First of all, the problem needs to be relevant, actual. It should present a challenge uh, like the problems that are typical or relevant for Georgia, social, economic, uh, maybe in the need for new professions uh, or the problem of uh, 
forest fires in Baku, for example, it's very relevant and pertinent. If the problem is uh, really up to date and relevant and pertinent, it's discussed by everyone. Then when we start working on finding a solution to this problem, this is when we start working on the project, especially the engineering project, including the technological part. But this is not it. This is not enough. Since we are integrated into the education system, then it's a must for teachers and uh, pupils uh, to think about the key concepts uh, that we teach in school in different subjects, the scientific concepts, the big ideas that we teach. Uh, and we basically are studying the science uh, in line with these concepts and because of these concepts. We are trying to use in that learning process or during uh, the problem solving activities, we're trying to use virtual modeling and uh, we are trying to make sure that children and teachers uh, can see the connection with the national teaching standard because i will repeat it again even though we started with the clubs format we do hope that we will break through that wall the subject-based wall when the subjects are uh, separated from each other and they only uh, see their teaching within their subject objectives uh, another principle is that this project the problem it transforms into the problematic task what i mean by that that the learners can see a problem as something that needs to be addressed and solved and the solution will be real life connected or it could be the concept the conceptual idea maybe in the future when they grow up they will take up these concepts and these solutions to the real life and implement the practical uh, solutions uh, on a higher technological level and i keep reiterating that all of that should also reflect the actual social environmental issues health issues etc one of the examples of such work that we do you can see that the group this uh, seventh grader ninth grade uh, pupil and the 11th grade uh, pupils so together with their teacher they started developing the system of hydroponics and but they were motivated by our conversation that on mars the uh, astronauts will need some appliances automatic appliances so that they could uh, maybe grow plants uh, vegetables flowers and they started developing that system at the same time, when they worked on that project, they actually covered five areas of the national standard because they needed to figure out the biology and the plant life. They needed to understand the principle. I'm now breaking my key principle of integration, but I just wanted to split it to see uh, which uh, tracks actually had uh, to be brought together in their minds uh, when they worked on that model, on that project. They had to incorporate something from physics. Uh, they needed to think and to learn what sensors are to make this automated system for water supply and various chemical substances. They also had to figure out the programming uh, challenges in ICT. There was the important contribution of mathematics because they needed to use the 3D printers and the drawings. They needed to take a more professional view on the drawings, uh, how to make them, these designs, uh, of how to program the 3D printer. And then actually we realized uh, that uh, something could be produced from that system in terms of improvement of economy and agriculture of Georgia. So 
they were buying and we kept buying the components and we needed to understand how realistic these systems would be to be feasibly implemented into economy and they realized it was quite feasible quite uh, possible and implementable so also the chemical part of this steam project also was there but the most important question is where was the peculiarly interesting conceptual solution they had to make it really compact and they had to think about the feasibility of this project for the future uh, mars stations or other stations on other planets in the future so this is just an example a case of a project and uh, I will now stop the presentation and invite my colleague Medea and uh, she will continue and share about her interesting project she worked uh, on and this is a very interesting vision of STEAM and we debated uh, about that uh, with her but i think when you have uh, different approaches and different methods and different solutions uh, and different opportunities for the actualization of your creative skills it uh, generally improves the environment and the climate in our schools it is still unfortunately too formal and i think these approaches will um, make it more interesting and less boring and our school will become more human-centered Mede, you're welcome for my health problem i i couldn't i i can't switch my camera sorry and uh, i think mr kaha uh, told uh, everything but i want to add my own vision why i think that um, the problem-based learning is uh, a great way for STEAM-based learning. Um, and I want to share with you uh, my PBL. Um, when I suggested to my students to change unstable electric energy into stable one, so after they solved the problems for, from physics, they started to make models of wind turbines. Some of them made it colorful. You see uh, on this picture, others thought about name of it. And finally, they made presentation about it in front of other teachers and students uh, as well. Uh, for the day, they used their skills of research, communication, critical thinking, because they were asked, okay, with um, wind turbines, we can have energy from nature, but does it make problem for uh, birds in reality? So uh, they expressed the emphasis. Um, would it be effective to build uh, wind turbines everywhere? So they use their knowledge from geography classes. So for me, a STEAM project is not uh, one um, in which only arts teacher uh, and STEM teachers are involved. It's a project where all subject teachers are involved and by this way students can answer the uh, question why they teach every single subject. Project-based uh, learning crosses each of the five disciplines of STEAM uh, and, foster and fosters an inclusive learning environment in which all students are able to engage and contribute. And um, as we know, uh, a creative uh, person is who uh, can create something with one's own personality. And, um, and uh, for me, STEAM means personality when we can answer four questions. So um, what is created, uh, how it works, uh, who created it, and uh, what was the aim of this creation? Thank you. Uh, I, I will be here briefly um, thank you very much Medea. Well, unfortunately we don't have this einstein here at the webinar to extend the time of the webinar so it's longer than the planned 15 minutes for that presentation now i so the question on the chat about the support of the steam project and then we will give the floor to other attendees and the presenters and we will have still a chance to listen to some comments maybe not to all of them 
So please uh, follow the slide of platform and there is another question. Please answer it. What do you think is going to be the best support uh, to the STEM project? National, school, regional, uh, whatever, international. Please follow the link and answer that question. Uh, now, Anatoly Vasiluk, uh, could you please share about your work and about your ideas? Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I will try to quickly open my presentation. I will try to briefly speak uh, about uh, what uh, uh, I understand uh, about STEM and how I see it. Uh, just five minutes. So I will try to share my screen. Do you see it? So I will take a couple of minutes of your time to tell you about a position, a point of view. Some people say it's not STEM. Uh, others say that this is just non-standard implementation of STEM. But this is something that I find interesting to discuss. It's very easy. I am the robot addict uh, for over 16 years already. So. I'm a robot maker, so our key idea is that when we developed the concept of STEM in Ukraine, we realized that the robotics is a part of STEM. I used to say some time ago that very soon we're going to have many robots in the world, and our task is to decide whether we control the robots or robots control us. So our task as teachers is to actually enable people to control the robots. So one of the areas that I focus a lot on is how to use robots in the uh, classes of uh, sciences like geography, biology, chemistry, math, etc. Robotics is actually at uh, the non standard uh, combination of various subjects, but it actually helps us understand uh, the complicated things in an easy way. You can program, you can program a robot, and we can see this programming from a different point of view. With the help of robots, we could have very many non-standard uh, interdisciplinary classes, and I will try to share with you. But still, if we talk uh, whether robotics is STEM or not STEM, it's a highly debatable uh, question. Some people support that idea. The other Others don't, uh, but I'm not offering to you the answer now. What I am offering is the discussion. Actually, we can use robots uh, for various subjects, for various studies and research. We have the technology, we make robots, we program them, we have different models and designs, etc. So we assemble robots, we test robots. And maybe it's part of engineering and math. Math is always there because we have various calculations, computations for robots, for their programming. You can't do without math here. Uh, I uh, actually once came across this approach, the suggestion are STEAM when robotics is not incorporated into STEAM, but uh, it's part of an interesting concept developed and promoted by the Korean company Robo Robo. Should you be interested, I could tell you more about that. But uh, they are not considering robotics uh, as part of STEM, but uh, close to STEM, associated with STEM. It's an interesting concept. But robots could be used for sciences in many applications, in labs very often. Well, what I am uh, telling you about, we already practiced all of that. You can program robots for performing various activities in chemistry, for example, for various chemical reactions, for the sensors of temperatures, etc. Actually, all of the robotics uh, is built to imitate the human uh, being, but there is this uh, concept uh, which is called reflex. Uh, it's something very similar in the programming of robots. So you need to understand the biology and the biological uh, basis, but we can talk about this more later. As to biology, we are practicing with different robots. We are always comparing a man and a robot. This is the sensor system, the distance perception, the motor skills, the muscles work, uh, uh, the touch uh, sensors, very many comparisons. That means that we not always work with the animal 
animals, but also with plants. Uh, uh, that's a huge area to discuss how robotics could be applied there. And it's important that robotics becomes uh, the helper of the sciences. Geography, it's about creating various appliances, weather stations, etc. Why it's important to the colleagues before me told that it should be applicable. Children should really try and test uh, trial and error practice to use it and apply it. Many physics related things are there. We have a huge separate area where we use robots in half of the physics classes, basically. A lot of math uh, because programming and math and robotics are closely related. Uh, and when we are uh, Talking about this topic, if you ask me, I could give you examples uh, how children build robots on the basis of math and how it helps them. But in addition, for robotics, we also use other resources and sensors that could not be assigned to the specific subject. Uh, so um, be cautious, uh, be careful, because robotics has addictive. And this is my brief uh, presentation. Robotics, whether it's STEM or not STEM, STEAM, it's up to you. You could comment on the chat about that. I'm sorry I'm so fast and uh, brief, but if we get to work together in the future, I could share more ideas about robotics and how to incorporate it into STEM. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this brief but very informative presentation. I just remembered. Um, the part of the recent summit where we saw this uh, dog uh, running on the stage, uh, the robot. It was scary, but very interesting. So the connection of biology and integration, I think uh, the future will definitely use that. Uh, and uh, it will be another turn and breakthrough. Thank you for your ideas. We will try to post them on the platform. Maybe we are going to get the questions about that. And now I have the question, if you are not able to stay for another 30 minutes because we're going to have another presentation, you can speak now. But uh, if you have more time, please stay for 30 minutes more with us uh, because uh, we will be a bit late and behind the schedule. So if you need to speak now, two or three minutes, if you're in a hurry, you're welcome. Otherwise. I know who uh, plan to speak, uh, and uh, we will have it later. And now I would like to introduce Lyudmila Rajesenka, our expert. Uh, so can you hear me now and see me now? We, we can. Now we can see and hear you. So, dear colleagues, I'm going to tell you about the experience of incorporating the STEM STEAM approach in the school, from inside the school. And I'm going to talk about different roles because me, as the subject teacher, I'm a STEM dissident, so to say, and an organizer. I am coordinating the entire uh, track in the school. And also, we are lucky because we have already benefited a lot from STEM. And we uh, realized what is lacking to have STEM working in school. I would like to cover the recent three years of our experience in practical. I come from Estonia and I work in a large Russian speaking school and um, I interact with various communities who are dealing with these innovations like that. So what steps did we take uh, in that direction? First of all, we had uh, the timely materials provided, appliances, equipment, uh, the Lego corporations, festivals. other corporations, they were engaged in competitions and festivals. We had the webinars, online courses for anyone interested. But these were usually the random individual teachers. One or two teachers from a school where each of them was like the outcast because all of the other subjects used the subject-based and class-based system within the strict curriculum, which impeded this process. It's a contradiction because STEM would actually be considered part of the extracurricular 
многие из них представляли Подборку роботов они постепенно И, конечно, удар они как бы первого все равно все равно вот Microelectronics, uh, they ну, required the knowledge of the microelectronics basics or the project-based project culture, culture, which was not available. Uh, the Projects available on the internet were very helpful because these appliances, they already have the internet resources behind them, uh, replication of the previously implemented ideas uh, in the framework of the hobby group or club. It actually helped us uh, to learn this properly, trying and error, touching, testing, rather than the uh, gradual learning of the environment, the programming language, etc. Like, first you learn to swim and then we will give you the pool. But we actually stepped into the pool, into the water, the first we did. The idea was to promote the search for new ideas and new projects that was not really compatible with the regulations that were adopted in the school that has been used for dozens of years before and uh, there was an obstacle because the teachers who were working that way, they would find it boring to do the same thing. But those who had the previous experience of using the ready-made project, вот, вот, вот of course, course they would find it convenient и, и to follow that line of replication. Больше, чем, uh, and there are many more of the second type teachers. teachers. And, and these uh, first type teachers вот. are a big Что obstacle for them. Плохо, and вот they are frustrated about them. Нас, uh, so, all of the resources that we suddenly received in the country, I'm not uh, talking about the national level, but it was the public open uh, access uh, level of introducing these uh, uh, elements, like the e-school, e-government, all of that accessibility. We had it in the country as part of the policy, but it doesn't matter uh, why it uh, came there. Uh, what was more important that these repositories came there, uh, but also we we had to talk about the human resources. Uh, we didn't even have the proper uh, computer science uh, textbook developed and designed by our own teachers before. Therefore, we needed to do that. In 2018, the Estonian teachers developed this e-textbook on computer science for primary schools. They included the basics for robotics, for the young, like, uh, this really fits into the concept of STEM because it was like a popular textbook. Also, we had uh, some of the failing projects, rather. I would say they brought more negative experiences than positive experiences, but we value them for that. And our school also participated in that project. We suddenly were flooded with all of the smart appliances, sensors, media controllers, etc. Some of the 
medical things, we were not even able to use many things in schools because the procurement was implemented by some structures, some entities, uh, but the regulations were developed by others. Uh, these uh, actually were not necessarily expensive. For example, this green screen, this is the, uh, uh, something that maybe promotes and boosts the clock to do to make a film that you need the script to be written to be creative etc how do you do that in the class uh, you need to do it uh, extracurricular so we have this google assistant uh, column uh, this is like the receiver sound uh, transmitter we had this uh, graph line the tablets graphic tablets we had like one or two of them and you have so many children in the class so it was not a boost and it was not a benefit but it was a challenge for the school in fact how do we make use of them because very often in addition to microbits and uh, the good uh, verified and tested uh, Lego uh, 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 skits a lot of equipment was not always perfected it was not always correctly operating you had to contact the developers you had to start the communication uh, to say that we don't have uh, in school uh, the ability to maintain and service that equipment how to use it but also we needed to report on how we were using this appliances and equipment and we had to be creative so these uh, learning materials were developed but they ended up in these uh, cemeteries repositories of the lesson reports that could hardly be replicated and hardly needed and wanted by anyone else so these organizational problems and issues that were highlighted in schools I believe anyone dealing with the robotics or the new disciplines I would call it this way they find it very difficult to, to assign various appliances to the specific subjects. The chemistry teacher, the physics teacher, the biology teacher would uh, really shun away and say, this is not about my subject, this is not my subject. So what could uh, be the solution? According to the well-known uh, research by Hetty, uh, the quality of learning, quality of education, also the innovative part, there is one important factor, collaboration of teachers that the children see. This is the approach that we actually took. So we could see this uh, collaboration collaboration, the uh, joint project of chemistry teacher and the physics teacher. So these were like courses. This is not uh, this was not yet the school subject. You could integrate anything, but you should have the class hours, the syllabus, the curriculum, etc. You can't fit it into the school otherwise. That's why we even noted down these problems when we started going to conferences and workshops. Who do we give this testing kit to? Everyone is trying to avoid that. Teachers turned out to be not willing, aren't willing to cooperate very much. As to the testing of equipment, it's a new format for the school. It was not part of the job duties of the teachers. So this is also important to upgrade. So we were not always able to figure out with the uh, manuals what is more. They were not available or available in the Korean language or whatever. So we needed to develop these uh, guidance and manuals uh, instructions. Children helped us. So we actually gave these appliances to children, including the digital microscopes or anything. And their task was, for for example, in the hobby group uh, uh, led by the chemistry teacher, try and test whatever you have, try to use it and to apply it to the task that you have. For example, this digital microscope that sends the data to the smartphone and tell me why you are doing that. Because in terms of knowledge, well, this is the equipment, this is the appliance, they gave it to us, we were not able to choose. What can we do about that? So we worked like that. Of course, uh, there is a limited number of projects that could fit into this mode of work because certain 
equipment, uh, whatever it is, uh, needs to be adjusted to the school curriculum. This is the key challenge still, I believe. All of the disadvantages uh, and the deficiencies of teachers, uh, they're being not prepared to accept this equipment and try to use it. And also, it's important that the teacher is able to uh, formulate the proper task for the children because not all teachers are ready to give this expensive equipment to children. I had to make a nice present to get a robot to, to the teacher and get to the teachers to try it at home. Don't be afraid of only four buttons. Just play around, take it with it around at home. You will not break it, never. And the teachers were really afraid and apprehensive of that to try it. But children are not afraid of anything, you know, and they have different kind of experience. So teachers, вот. therefore, are not конечно, able to set the learning objectives, the methodological objectives, so we need to be creative. So if we still have some time, I would like to talk about my subject, because I am rather the math and the computer science teacher, and I need to talk about the huge problem of the paper-based math, because all of these digital formats into tests uh, is not, usually not considered to be creative, even though I believe there is a huge field for creativity. Now, I think uh, we should not uh, go back to the Middle Ages and uh, allocate half of the curriculum to the skills uh, that could be easily solved by the calculators, not to mention more sophisticated equipment. But we could allocate this part of the curriculum to projects, uh, to project-related skills, etc. How could we do that? So, there is this uh, idea of GeoGebra, uh, this dynamic model, it's an example, and I would like to refer you to that, and here's the quote, if the thing is not interactive, it will be considered broken. And this is from the book, uh, uh, that I quote uh, about the trends uh, that could be well applicable to school. So I think it's uh, time that we stop teaching children to swim without a swimming pool. And uh, I will now be finishing because we don't have much time, but I would like to say that any teacher could uh, create uh, these uh, approaches uh, based on the new needs uh, within any sphere. Uh, today we could hear many ideas that uh, really favor a lot and support a lot. And here there are many tasks when each task, each problem could be interactive, not just uh, write down the math problem properly, but change something, change the pr uh, parameter and see what happens, tinker with that. And uh, Merab launched this uh, voting, this poll, uh, very properly, and I would like to talk about the support. Where should the support be coming? And uh, if you study the dynamic geometry, this GeoGebra environment, uh, you will understand why I started writing about that. I started writing uh, 10 years ago about Desmos. Sounds very boring, but it offers brilliant opportunities, actually. I can hear some noise. Попробовали с учениками so самые главные, что не олимпиадники, самые средние, самые слабые, поставили И она получилась локальный А вот уже сейчас второй год подряд, буквально вчера, Дезмос объявляет второй глобал соревнования в графических рисунках uh, design in this graphic calculator environment. Uh, uh, but I will not talk uh, more about that. We have the community. I will make an announcement. These are the masterpieces you know, made by the school uh, students from all over the world. It's much easier than it seems, even for the neophytes. But the paradox is, well, 
I'm writing the articles, the blog posts, uh, I could even already make, compile a book of that. I'm really open to share through the community that uh, we have. It's the international community, the Russian-speaking community. We have people from nine countries. And uh, hardly anyone is willing to take these appliances and equipment and try them. And I understand that because uh, children are usually overburdened and overloaded. Math is uh, the most controlled subject all over the world. Exam tests and we're preparing for the tests. But all of this is... Is, uh, uh, in between uh, all of the areas such as programming, creativity, math. Uh, so this is the picture made at uh, the age of 14 by a learner with the help of mathematical formulas. And here it's another example. Each of the lines uh, has not been drawn but programmed by the functions. We also sent it to the contest in 2020 when the pandemic started. It was not awarded uh, but it's the important experience when the learners participate in the international contest. They manage to see other kids they would be competing with in a couple of years uh, in the labor market when they graduate from universities. So what, do you know what STEM is? This is when the whole world is open, united, and without the borders. And this is true. And we could say that the language doesn't matter this country doesn't matter, the nationality doesn't matter, but what matters is the skills. And our school is sort of impeding these processes, it's getting attached to the outdated protocols and standards and rituals. How do we change these things? I don't have the ready solutions. And if you are interested, I could also send the presentation to you. We decided to address this uh, uh, problem from inside the school. And we allocated uh, some part of mathematics and transformed it into the Robo mathematics. We had one um, expert presenting the PhD thesis about that, and this person is the, like the forefather of uh, this Robo mathematics. It's a new subject, like robotics and mathematics. And uh, pulling the narrowly specialized math to the robotics, this is not what we need. I think it sets many limitations. Uh, how do we impose standards there? It's a problematic still. The attempts have been made. It's in the school. It's not the extra, uh, extracurricular education. No, it's the school. Because in the extracurricular, in the non-formal, it's easier to manage. But all of these approaches, the flipped class, the group work, the peer group, etc., uh, these uh, are the simple and easy to use things. Of course, we should be more bold to follow it does, but we also need to lobby to the government many things. It's important to go to conferences and uh, borrow the experience and the uh, best practices, uh, but uh, it's also important to lobby that uh, because uh, when we have the teacher in our schools, they're trying to correlate uh, their experience to the existing standards of schools, and they say it's not part of the curriculum. We have this old and limited and restricted approaches, and that's the problem. Here I have some links to interesting resources, and you are welcome. That's me. That's it. Thank you very much, Lyudmila. Uh, you always uh, present very interesting presentations. We will share this uh, presentation to everyone and even send it out to everyone. I am just thinking about this dilemma when they say the robots are going to claim our jobs uh, and uh, humans will have to shift to the creative works and the robots will be managing the automated activities. So as far as I understand, uh, creativity also decreased the dimension. Uh, they are going to be another subject incorporated into the school curriculum. I believe this team will bring us the first steps and we are going to see the interesting outputs in the near future. And now I would like to summarize our poll. Let's see what kind of support uh, has more answers. We can see that the school level, you can see that slide. 
not all of the participants uh, chose this option, but there were two options like the school, then international. So these are two most uh, supported options. Also, we have some local and regional support and national support, which has the least of answers. Uh, international, obviously, it's clear because the international organizations promoted the STEM and then STEAM policy in the beginning. And here we have like the community level, networking level, horizontal uh, level. And I would like to give the floor to the representative of the STEM Association from Georgia. And I would like to ask her to take several minutes to share about the association of the STEM teachers in Georgia. You're welcome. Salome. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here and uh, represent STEM Teachers Association. Uh, it's an association which has been found by five STEM teachers. Uh, and uh, they are working on the STEAM field, but they are uh, spe specialized on physics, math, chemistry, technology. And although we have a Georgian language teacher here also, and uh, she's, very inter uh, she's really interested in the subject and the working on it, uh, association aims to popularize STEM around Georgia to make uh, its teaching and learning available and make sure that teachers are well qualified uh, to give students uh, formal and non-formal uh, education in relation to STEM. Um, for this, uh, association is working with different uh, government and, and non-governmental organizations, including uh, Georgian uh, coalition for education although educational ministry of georgia and we are working with uh unicef also and peace corp now um we have uh, events for uh, student, uh, for teachers like um, trainings and uh, lectures uh, for example our last uh, activity was for a 15 hour training for uh information uh, information uh, technology teachers uh, in programs scratch and uh, it had a great feedback um, uh, we are um, happy that here are some people from georgia we I, i've seen them in the chat and i um, want to share the uh, our facebook page so you can join us and we are welcome uh, we are welcome for international um, uh the, the people from uh international um field so they can join us and help us to uh give better uh chance georgia teachers uh, so they can be involved in stem they can develop and make uh teaching uh more interesting for students and uh, make them stronger in the STEAM field. Uh, I'll share our Facebook page on the chat. Uh, you can follow us and help us if you will. Thank you. Thank you very much, Salome. Uh, Thank you very much, Salome. Let's make friends with associations so to share the experiences and also this horizontal networking seems to be becoming more influential and uh, even in the steam edu project there is a guide how to uh, push forwards the policy necessary policies on the different levels national levels and others and then i hope our um, session comes um, strong enough our community not the association and i wish all associations including the salmas one um, success. And now, uh, I know that some people wanted to speak uh, because you mentioned this during the registration. Irina Vasilyeva from Belarus, you're welcome to speak. You're muted. I 
А сейчас хорошо слышно? Can you hear me now? I would like to support Lyudmila and what she said uh, in her presentation because we are in a special situation because work in the additional education, extracurricular education for uh, children and young audiences. Uh, we are not limited with our resources and we are not limited with the curricula stringent requirements. We can respond to the needs of children and we can bring them to the world of uh, IT, high technologies, but also to the world of creativity, programming and robotics if they wish so. That's why, of course, we have a different context and we have different conditions. What the school teachers do within the framework of STEM and when they're teaching the regular subjects should be appreciated. Mirab, what else would you like to hear from me? Because we can actually share what we do in the system of the extracurricular education, but I think this is the topic for another meeting. I just wanted to mention your program, so should you have interesting outputs? Yes, we do. We have a project in Belarus. It's the project Programming the Second Literacy for children of the grade two to six, scratch we, we use. We have Programming Without the Electric Socket project. So we went uh, to the uh, preschoolers, uh, senior preschoolers. We don't work with computers, but we work with robots. Lyudmila partially mentioned that we have this Matata lab and others. It all depends on the capacity of the school. They are not limited uh, in choosing the means of implementation. We provide the methodological materials for them. We consult the teachers uh, so that they could incorporate into their learning the STEM elements. Uh, and uh, the development of logical thinking, algorithm-based thinking as part of the curriculum subject. This is what we offer. We can talk about that more if you, the colleagues are interested. Uh, and also in our training center, we offer for the learners of the grade one and two, we are using the ideas we borrowed from the Ludmila. This is like the pencil-based uh, computer science, a computer-less, uh, computer-free learning. So we are helping small kids uh, to enter the IT world. Uh, and this is the smooth transition. First, we teach them to use the computer as a tool. And then all of the other things would be added later in the the age. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we are going to have this opportunity. Maybe you could uh, give or talk. you can write on the open space. Of course, if there is an interest, uh, yes, of course, please write on the blog. Mirab, I think we will find it very interesting. Mirab, could I comment briefly about the contradiction that uh, is very manifest today between the formal and informal education? It's uh, very meaningful because the non-formal education is product-based, idea-based, competition-based, creativity-based. It's a wide range of outcomes. School is aiming at the fake values, the assessment, the score. So it's not possible to develop this product during the class. So it would usually be done uh, like uh, superficially. We just do it and leave us alone. Вред колоссальный. That's why Я сегодня it's very harmful. Ребят, там, подготовленных, Today we had the uh, children uh, recruited for the local project, this Desmos oriented. Uh, uh, we are doing this remotely uh, and we're proving this, this could be successful. But uh, when you say that you need to make something creative, and this is great seven and eight, that creativity was killed by the school. It's not that they are not able to do that. They're not willing to do this because they got accustomed to copy paste the model. And now we are talking about the skills of the 21st century. At least they should be able to organize their leisure time with the creative activities. I'm not even talking about the earning money with creativity. School is killing the talent. 
one of our well-known authors said, education versus talent, or education against talent. This is what we do with the help of STEM. And I think if the school as an organization and entity doesn't do anything to overcome this nature that it has now, the acquisition of new equipment and all of this stuff, and even replacement of the teachers would not help. Because school is oriented at these fake values. And I think it's a huge obstacle to success. I'm sorry for being so pessimistic, but you obviously quoted Ken Robinson, right? Yes, of course. Uh, please pay attention. That's another interactive activity. Please uh, follow the link on the chat. It's not really the poll, but the evaluation of this webinar. Please uh, try to do it. Kaha, you're welcome. I'm very happy to be part of this webinar. I would like to express the gratitude uh, because we started to be very optimistic uh, what we could offer, what we could suggest, what we do. But I'm really grateful to Lyudmila and Irina who raised uh, the uh, question about challenges. Because very often when we have this discussion on the national level, we are sharing our small victories, uh, small successes in the small groups. But they have always been there in any educational system with any resources available or not available. But if we want uh, to have the STEM education and the freedom of enjoy of making things and creating things, if we want to, you know, boost this wave uh, to cover the big amount of school public schools we need to break this wall of the subject-based uh, teaching if it doesn't change on the level of the national standards on the level of the national objectives learning objectives if we don't give the freedom to schools uh, uh, even what the ken robinson says or whoever says there was this I don't remember the name. And uh, he compared the school to the prison. You come there with this bell ringing, starting the school and finishing the school. And then you come to school and maybe you are creative and try to find the solution. But here you have this bell and it signifies that you need to rush to change it to English, to chemistry, to other uh, things and subjects. And it goes against the logics of learning, project-based learning in particular. When children and good teachers could actually work uh, to find the solution to various problems. But if we shift it all into the non-formal education, there is another challenge there because children always have limited time. We work eight hours and then we need to take a rest. And our children very often work for seven lessons and then they come home and they stay up until 10 uh, p p.m. going to different clubs, etc. And this is the cognitive overload so when the optimal time uh, comes there they become teenagers and go to universities many of them have no energy left you know to have this motivation that the small kids have it's uh, very difficult to keep it and maintain it for a long time so i totally support and agree and i hope that in georgia we will not be solely concentrated on uh, having this uh, six or eight best learners they win some contest and they went to nasa to some competition to decide how to go to mars and they go to mars but thousands of other children still need to learn by heart paragraph six and they move to paragraph eight etc from the textbook stem education and other things only is left to conferences and uh, some individual victories, small victories. And we are not able to scale it up and to have the mass scale reinterpretation. And what is important, this pandemic, I, making this bad joke, maybe it's bad, but actually 
God needed to give us this pandemic to stop this formal systemic education that Ken Robinson criticized. We keep criticizing it, but we still keep uh, maintaining it. Even po post pandemic, we want to go back to the uh, zero uh, point. But still, um, it's easier. That's why we are prone to have it again, which is wrong. And I think that the meetings like this should probably be helpful. And maybe our children will eventually break this wall that uh, is fencing them off uh, from the real world needs. Uh, with the joy of the learning because you cannot uh, reduce the learning to something that you must do and this comparison from bell to bell should transform into something different that the school is a place for joy the joy of learning because there are interesting things and it shouldn't be only for schools that have uh, good funding that could implement the STEM education. But any school, any small village school should be able to do that. Thank you very much. Sorry for taking much of this time, but I think it's very important we speak this out. Uh, I actually wanted to give some floor to others. We have the two representatives of the international organizations who are talking about this. And we have the representatives of the schools uh, and uh, also in Georgia, we have this recent trend that this uh, uh, new school curricula should be um, incorporated into the policies. Uh, so we are, are trying to do something about that. Uh, Irina, you wanted to add something? No, I just uh, clapped my hands. I gave the applause because I support Kaha and what he said. We obviously face the same challenges in our country. I suppose. Uh, I mean, Kaha was speaking as as if uh, through my mouth. We obviously wanted to see a different kind of school, but we actually have what we have. Ludmila is a good example where she's trying to address these issues. I think STEM is another chance. It's not a lost chance, but it's another chance for our schools to change. Uh, Marina Iskakova, you're welcome. Uh, dear colleagues, I am from Kutaisi. I am the uh, principal of the secondary school 33. I was listening very carefully to you, and I have been really interested in STEM since my early years, programming, physics, math, and I'm trying to incorporate all of it in school. And you know, the first thing I did we cancelled the grades, the scores. That's right. Uh, we only have four schools in Georgia, four schools that opted for the new way of assessment. I really find it difficult to speak in Russian. I'm sorry. So we are trying not to assess the classwork, homework. We only assess the tests because according to the law, we need to have the grade eventually. And it impacted children very much. Now they're more open, have more interest in learning. And uh, teachers also have the opportunity to, well, Kaha sent the projects, the STEM projects uh, to our school and I checked. First, I needed to like make uh, teachers do something, but now teachers are interested themselves. We selected like 18 to 20 projects, and now actually teachers transform their tests uh, into the STEM projects. But I need to say that the problem will never be solved if we don't uh, teach teachers, if we don't train teachers. The teachers are reluctant. Our education system is about to shift to the integrated learning, like the grade 10, 11 uh, 
is not supposed to have the separate subjects and i can see that the teachers are reluctant to accept it because we they don't have proper training we only have the physics and uh, chemistry uh, teachers we don't have the programmers in school i'm not sure about your countries but in georgia we don't have the teachers uh, of uh, computer sciences uh, only the self-educated but the programmers wouldn't go to school to be teachers, you know. It's a huge problem. We need to have training for teachers. Children would always be open. They find it interesting. Of course, it's more interesting and exciting than the regular subject uh, cramming. Uh, but I think it's important to talk about the training of teachers of ICT. Or maybe we could accept young uh, uh teachers who have had this kind of education already. But I think in universities, they don't have a special course for to train the ICT teachers according to STEM approach. I might be mistaken, but thank you for raising these issues. Thank you for sharing this practical tips, but we don't have either the technical uh, support in school, but of course, not all projects require all of that equipment. But anyway, today I received like 120 lari and i had to spend for to buy some materials which is already beyond the limited funding that we have for school thank you very much and thank you for raising your issues uh, unfortunately some of the participants left uh, they wanted to say something but i was writing in the blog about them irada safara would you like to say anything about your interesting experience you're welcome are you muted, muted. so you can hear me now i would like to welcome everyone i'm really happy to be able to participate in this webinar it's a very interesting topic because uh, it uh, actually is very similar to what we had remember Mirab, we had this intel project based learning in azerbaijan uh, where i am from stem has been introduced as a subject already and it's uh, you know not very promising for me i'm really cautious about that you know my grandchildren are having this subject making interesting things and bring in show but my question is can we fit stem into the 45 minutes of the lesson what do you think dear colleagues how does it correlate to the spirit and nature of stem is this the appropriate approach but children like it anyway but i mean I actually was not prepared to speak, but um, the topic is just interesting for me. So, I mean, of course, it's uh, very creative and develops the children, but is it going to last? Is it the proper approach? What Lyudmila was saying, I also have known Lyudmila for a long time. I really like her approach and I support that the school uh, limits it all. So, I mean, if they, if we have this uh, STEM as the separate subject, is it possible to extend the limits? Thank you. Is no, anyone думаю, willing to comment конечно. on that? It's of course, uh, I don't uh, think uh, it, this сказать, is promising. But it's important uh, to say that it's good that the school does at least something. When teachers develop certain experience, maybe you could buy some equipment because there is the official subject. Maybe they develop certain standards, national standards. Maybe they will have the standard projects. But STEM is not about standards. STEM is about creating new things, you know, taking small steps. So it's better than nothing. But when we talk about the scalable practices, I don't think it's going to work that way. I don't have the solution. I uh, suggest 
that we learn certain experience and initiatives and uh, they have the polls, the questionnaires uh, uh, related to STEM, also about standardization. It doesn't mean that everyone is supposed to have it all the same. And there is was this project in Azerbaijan's team one, and they have the classification, the profile, they have the recommendations, uh, the competence framework for STEM, for STEAM. You can check. Uh, maybe some of these things uh, could be uh, relatable to you. Maybe you could write more and comment more on the open space then. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who is willing to speak? We probably should plan the two hours for next time, not the 90 minutes. So we still have a minute or two to uh, take uh, the floor. But anyway, thank you to everyone who was uh, able to speak and express their opinions. Then if there are no other questions or comments, then I will be happy to see you other times. Uh, I know that uh, in a week's time on uh, November 25, there is uh, another webinar by other colleagues. I don't remember the topic, Fabio could help me or maybe write in the comments and then we will check the evaluation. Yes, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for the link. Just give me a second. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, sure, тогда, значит, давайте я пока uh, то, что запомнилось, покажу минутку вам. Что же наши результаты? Let's then just check the results. So we can see this word cloud, a holistic approach to STEAM was supported the most. STEM is needed, but there are many challenges which are actually manageable, hard but needed. Freedom of creativity, it's again about creativity, freedom of education, it could go together, yeah. But uh, holistic approach to STEAM wins. Uh, and also the correlation of the regular conventional school formats uh, shall be considered. So, uh, Fabi, if you uh, didn't find it, it's okay. Yes, I put it, I put it in the chat. The theme uh, will be, in general, innovative teaching and learning. But as you can see from the way it was written, it's a, a similar to STEAM. It's a mixture between uh, uh, I would say, um, scientific and humanistic uh -huh. disciplines. And it's, um, it will be also in Russian, as far as I know. And so feel free in Russian and English. So feel free to register, and uh, this is going to take place on the 25th of November next week. So you're all welcome to join. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to everyone for uh, coming uh, this late, and uh, enjoy uh, your weekend and your Friday evening. Uh, the report will be available on the Open Space website next week. And also feel free also to post in the open space. I think every user is equal there. So, and uh, everyone can share their experience, knowledge to and broadcast it to the community, which is growing. Thank you very much again. Thank you to our interpreter.